my name is Lana Love, and I am here live at The Cutting Room Studios in New York City at the Barrel Elites Conference. And I have the absolute pleasure of interviewing Ed Lavery, who is the VP of Investor Intelligence at Placer AI. And we have three very important questions that I know are burning on everyone's mind today. So Ed, how do you collect your data and how are investors making informed decisions based off of that? So we provide foot traffic data. So essentially we are tracking uh, millions of people in the US and we're tracking every single location that they're going to. So it could be retail, it could be going to the office, it could be people going to towns, travelers and tourism, or even people working in manufacturing plants. So the way that we collect our data, we track 25 million devices uh, in the US alone, which is about 8% of the population. We take that data, we aggregate that data, and we provide estimation data. So as a company, Placer, we sell to about 3,000 corporates, and we're also growing in the investment space. Hedge funds are using us to track how the companies that they are investing in in real time are performing through foot traffic. So it could be using foot traffic as a proxy for retail sales. It could be tracking the number of people going to a theme park like Six Flags and looking at things like attendance. It could even be looking at things like return to the office, like how is office occupancy rate recovering post COVID? So there's many different ways that investors are using our data whether it's pre predicting financial results or actually trying to really understand or provide, like going to uh, dig into details of an investment hypothesis. So how are, like for instance, it could be how are McDonald's new stores performing versus old stores? How loyal are customers? So all this information investors are using to provide a more kind of detailed, accurate investment decision and make them with more confidence and track those companies in real time. Wow. So you basically tracked me on my way here, is what you're saying. Well, That's... we don't know if it's you in particular. <laughs> we're not in the business of anything personal identifiable. I'm just but uh, like, we're, like the data we provide is aggregated data. We're a privacy first business as well. But what we can actually do is track demographics of people who are going to a building. So we might not know it's you, Lana, that is going to a building, but we can say a hundred, uh, like a thousand people are going to the cutting edge today. They, are living, they live in these areas. They live five miles away. They live two miles away. They have this household income. This is where they're going to afterwards as well. So hedge funds are using this to make more informed decisions. Private equity funds are using this as part of their due diligence or even to help these businesses grow as well. Got you. Okay, that makes me feel better. That's fine. Don't worry. Since all of New York is here tonight. <laughs> so number two, what is going on in the economy and what are some trends you're seeing in this current landscape today? So I think one of the really interesting things that we're seeing at the moment is that actually foot traffic to many retail locations and stores is dropping. Now, this could be an impact of inflation. People are spending less as well. But I know at the same time, retailers and consumer goods companies, they're growing their revenue. So one thing we're actually seeing is that fewer people are visiting but they're paying more for items as well. So um, that's kind of one of the key trends. Some of the areas we have seen a bit of foot traffic growth has been the leisure sector. So people are visiting fitness locations, cinemas a bit more as well. So that's beginning to recover. I think one of the kind of the key areas that we're seeing, which I think is gonna be an issue going into 2024, is aspects like return to office. So in some cities like New York, we're seeing office return to the office recovering somewhat. It's still about 20 or 30 percent below uh, 2019 levels. Places like San Francisco, on the other hand, are more like 30 or 40 percent below their 2019 levels. So one of the big areas and like an area that we're watching and tracking in real time is returning to office in general. And it, and it looks like going to 2019 with companies working more remotely, working from home, taking off, and just not needing as much office space as well. It looks like storm clouds kind of gathering ahead, particularly as interest rates are rising uh, more wow. as well. It's because of all my online shopping. Exactly, people like you are it's causing like 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 these me. office leases not to be renewed. Yeah, exactly. right, it's exactly. my fault, it's my fault. It's okay, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. It's fine. I'll take it. So speaking of 2024, where do you see the growth opportunities in the data space? So I think one of the key things that's been brought up a lot in this conference today 
is the increase in interest in alternative investments. So the world being real estate, fixed income, distressed, that's where there's kind of a big trend. In the alternative data space, um, data has mainly been used by equity investors, longshore equity investors. But with the equity markets right now, struggling to kind of reach a bull market as they have in a few years, and with interest rates much higher, investors are looking for returns in other sectors. And fixed income, uh, where there's lower risk, has been a key space. So one of the key trends that we're seeing at the moment is traditional laggards in the industry, whether it be more traditional fixed income investors, insurance companies, endowment funds, even real estate investors who haven't been using much data before in the past are beginning to start now looking at data sets, particularly like geolocation data as well. They're looking at traditional bricks and mortar businesses, which are highly leveraged companies. Um, and they're realizing that actually foot traffic can provide actually very good long indicate, term indicators into these businesses. So we're beginning to start seeing a much bigger mass adoption of data beyond traditional hedge funds, but actually in more kind of the tail end of the market, these more traditional, slower moving uh, asset investors, so fixed income investors, beginning to start tracking businesses in more real time. It gives another flavor. And as companies and also real estate uh, developers don't report their results uh, that often, this real-time data and understanding how many people are going back to the office, how many people are visiting stores, provides that real-time trend on these kind of long-term indicators for these investors. Gotcha. And how many people are online shopping? How many people? Well, You're online shopping too. I'm online Come shopping. On. Not right now. Not exactly. right now. But I do like going back to the store as well. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Getting outside the house. More geo traffic. Cracking. Right? Exactly. We need more Jerry Chuck. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ed. This has been a pleasure. And stay tuned for the next interview.